Well, tonight is a special night. And the reason it's special is that it's, it's very unique. And the reason it's unique is that there's a relationship between these that are getting baptized and the rest of us that are here. And it's so unique that uh, the Apostle Paul talks about this unique relationship. In fact, in Philippians chapter 1, in verse 3, he says, I thank my God every time I remember you. Now, what he's doing here, he's talking, he's writing a letter to some people. Some friends of his, right? They're the people of Philippi. And he's very appreciative of these people. And it's kind of like a thank you note. Man, I appreciate you. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In verse 4, he says, in all my prayers for all of you, he says, I always pray with joy. Wow. There was joy in Paul's heart for these people. And we're going to find out in verse 5 what the joy was. He says, I always pray with joy because of your what? Partnership in the gospel. And tonight, that's the unique relationship between those of you that are getting baptized and the rest. There's a, there's a partnership between us, right? In any partnership like a marriage, right? There's work that has to be done, right? Ladies, how many of you can say, yep, there's work to be done? Men says, yep, there's a lot of work to be done, right? So in any partnership, both sides have basically a responsibility, something to do. The folks that have the blue, sh by the way, when you get baptized, you get a free t-shirt, amen? Come on now. I like free t-shirts, amen? But anyway, uh, th they've already started their responsibility in this unique relationship. And that is, they took a step of faith. 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 Some of them actually came through uh, just recently, our next steps. How about that? You go to next steps, and the next thing you know, you're getting baptized. The next thing you know, you're attending. And next thing you know, you're on one of our serve teams. That's, that's how it works. But anyway, the unique relationship for them has already begun. They've already taken the initiative to say, yep, sign me up. Is the water going to be warm? By the way, it's 94 degrees. So the partnership on our part is a little bit different. The partnership that we have with these people, it is our responsibility to help them in their spiritual journey. Amen? Well, I didn't come to Family Life to hear that tonight. Well, maybe we need to hear that. You know, a lot of people don't come to baptism. When they hear it's baptism, they don't come. What a tragedy. So I thank you for coming to be part of this relationship. So our relationship is that we've got a job to do. We've got to get to know these people. We need to know if they can cook a gumbo for this Thanksgiving. If not, we can help them. We need to know some things about you. Yeah, she can cook, I can tell. Yeah, Kevin, I can tell. I can tell, brother. Vernon, watch his, watch his belt. So anyway, uh, this unique relationship gives us a job, a task. So don't walk away from here going, well, that was nice. They got wet. No, we have a responsibility to help each other grow and to help each other down the spiritual journey. Uh, uh, because you know what? It, it is a journey. It never ends. Amen. And part of that means that, uh, you know what? Maybe we can break bread together one day. Maybe we can fellowship at each other's home. Maybe we can maybe have a life group together. Talking about breaking bread, I had breakfast yesterday morning with two men uh, in the church. And it wasn't that we were just there to break bread and eat some biscuits with some jelly on it and some bacon. We talked about stuff. You know, stuff. You ever talk about just stuff? Men's stuff. We talked about cutting down a tree. We talked about cleaning our gutters. Men's stuff, right? 
hunting and fishing, sports. But then it transitioned to ministry. And you see, that's our relationship. Uh, we, we just sat there. We were all co-equals. It wasn't, I wasn't there as a pastor trying to minister. To them. They were ministering to me. And part of our unique relationship is not just attending church. There's more to church than just coming on Sunday and Wednesday. Amen. There's life. We, we, uh, we used to say we do, we want to do life together. So we want to do life together with the Giots and with the Trahans and Miss Dolores and Hazes. We want to do life with you. So it is our, your responsibility to take some initiative. They've done their part. How about you? Again, you might see these people on Sunday. By the way, check Kevin's pockets. But anyway, just, just come to church, and if you see him or her or these folks over here, the Trons and Mr. Loris and Hazel, say, hey, man, I'm excited for you. When you get around people in community, just like yesterday morning, I got encouraged by what these other gentlemen were saying. I need encouragement, and they needed encouragement. Iron sharpens iron. So don't look at tonight as just a run-of-the-mill baptism service. Rob's going to dunk them in the water. We're going to go home and we're going to eat some cookies if there's any left. You have to look at tonight as a special Yes, we're celebrating the win of their not only their decision to accept Christ, but their decision to go forward, to move the ball down the field. So there is a really a great dynamic relationship between people in the body of Christ. I said earlier, I've maybe been 1,400, 1,500 sermons over the course of my life to, on a, just a Wednesday night. And I was in the Baptist church, so we did two services on Sunday. We did Sunday morning, and then we came back Sunday night. So you can at least double that or triple that. But you know what? I still need the fellowship. I still need to, be, to hear the word from Pastor Todd. I still need to be around people of like-mindedness. Amen? Because all you got to do is get in a car and you can get unlike minded with the people in front of you that are behind you that are honking their horn and, and saying, hey, you're number one. Amen. There has to be a like mindedness when, when people come together. So that's why we want you to stay and enjoy some fellowship and refreshments if there's any left. Get to meet these people. Get to know where they work. Get to know, do you have any children, grandchildren? How long have you been coming? Don't do church alone. Because you're going to wind up staying alone. And so we just simply recommend, take advantage of the grief share, the uh, surviving the holidays this Friday. Come out next Wednesday and enjoy a special, well, I don't have any family. That's okay. You've got a new family. You got a lot of cousins in here. I know you have a lot of cousins, but there's a lot of drama with cousins, right? Again, there's a rich, deep, just nature to the relationship between those people that are taking the next step. Maybe you haven't taken the next step. And you want to be part of the partnership. Well, I'm going to give an opportunity at the close of the service for you to take that next step. Amen. And so we want you to do life together. Um, you know, we, we, we simply have a job to do and not just be attenders, but to take the field and let's move the ball down because we need each other, don't we? We all need each other. And if you're coming just to hear a sermon, that's great because we need to be fed, right? We need to, hey, Pastor Todd, give me some application that I can use, you know, tomorrow or, or Monday or whatever. But there's another relationship that we want you to look at and pay very close attention to. In fact, we, we like to shine a beacon of light around here on these relationships. Um, can I mention December 1? 
December 1, ladies, where are you? Kevin, put your hand down. Anyway, ladies, December 1st, it's a Saturday morning. You want a partnership with us? We're having a ladies' breakfast. What's keeping you from coming? Your husband's going to go hunting anyway. He's out the house. Glory. Ladies, a challenge. I would like it. By the way, it's free. We don't give free t-shirts, but it's free. Amen. Why not come? It's so simple. App, sign up. Sign up on the app so that way we know how many are coming. Men, Vernon and Kevin, you can't come. There's breakfast. You cannot come. But it's going to be just a, a couple hours, you know, not a whole lot of time. But why not come and hear the lady of the house, Miss Tanya, give a word? Amen? So how many ladies have signed up already? Okay. The rest of you have a job to do. Sign up. Do it right now. I don't care. Get your app out. Tap the app or whatever it's called. Text, yeah. Again, it's, it's about a relationship, about being around people of like-mindedness. You say, well, Rob, I don't know a whole lot of the Bible. Well, guess what? I didn't know a whole lot of, or, about the Bible. I thought Sodom and Gomorrah were husband and wife until somebody said, no, Rob, there's cities in the Bible and mess me up. Don't laugh at me because I know it's happened to you. When I first got saved in Atlanta, my pastor, man, he was King James all the way. And buddy, he would, broom, he would go and I'd get to one scripture. Whew, I got it. I, I, I finally found Ezekiel chapter 14. And next thing you know, he's gone off to another verse. And I'm like, dude, I just found this. And now you, I know what it's like. But over time, I got familiar. So don't let anything, don't let intimidation or comparison. You know what? The other people are goofy just like you. And it's all right. We can be goofy together. Amen. We can share life together. We can share uh, experiences together. And we can also pray with each other and hear the voice of someone else and say, how can I help you? Have a compassionate heart towards them. Amen. So there is a definite, definite, definite partnership that Paul had with the people of Philippi. And he goes on in verse 6, he says, Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen? Man, we're all moving forward, but especially these six tonight. We're so proud of you. And we're happy for you that you're, you're beginning a new journey. Uh, and, and, and the, the great thing is it, it doesn't stop here. There's more to the journey. There's more things to get involved with. And, and we're here to help you. We, you know, I, I need help just like you need help. Amen. Well, you don't have to say amen because I need help. But anyway, that's what I just wanted to share with you tonight before we uh, start the, the baptism is, is just uh, to encourage you about the relationship that happens at church. And you know, the cool thing is happening all, all over America, all over the world, even right now. There are Catholics that are coming together. There's Methodists that are coming together. The Presbyterians are coming together. The Baptists are coming together. They're eating right now, I think. But anyway, they're all coming... Wait a minute, we're eating too in a little while. But anyway, everybody is coming together because of the unique dynamic partnership that we see in the New Testament called church. Of people of different nationalities, different backgrounds. I mean, some of you were born in Arkansas. I mean, that's different, amen? But we all come together because of a common denominator, and his name is Jesus Christ. 
And so don't take that for granted when you come to church. We don't come to church to drink coffee or eat cookies. We come to church to experience life together, to learn about Jesus, to hear about Jesus, to worship Jesus, but to fellowship. And so once service is done, let's convene in the foyer. We were going to go with carpet, but we got scared. We said, no, let's do tile. Let's mess up the floor tonight, okay? Not Kevin. But anyway, we're going to mess up the floor tonight. We're going to have some fun. We're going to drink some coffee. We're going to get to know each other. Those are the six of you. Stick around. Come get some coffee uh, because we want to meet you. We want to understand who you are. Get to know you. If you're new to the church, you're in the right place. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. Take the next step. Amen.